Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. I'm Steven Silver, character designer and teacher, dedicated to helping you learn about the art industry and living up to your potential. Whippee! Okay, so today I wanted to discuss a couple of core ingredients that I think cause major artistic frustration, and uh, but ways to think about changing it, I, I, ideally, you know, if you can. So a couple of those things for me that I see through my years of just being in the industry, being an artist, being a teacher, what I've found, one of the major ingredients that are going to cause just that dissatisfaction, uh, depression within your art and all these other factors is just not having the ability to put down, of course, what's in your mind, what you see in your, in, in your head on paper. So that becomes that lack of skill set. And that's going to be one of the driving forces that's going to be the most uh, frustrating elements of, of being an artist and causing that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that feeling. So what it is, it's like you got you to gotta think about everything is about fixing a core problem. You got to understand how can I run if I don't even know how to walk, so to speak, right? You got to know what the core problem is with, with anything. If there's something that is malfunctioning, if there's, if there's a computer problem, if there's a, you, you got a, a, a faucet that, that's leaking, um, what's the core problem from that? What are you going to do? Are you just going to wrap a little band-aid around that, that little leak and eventually it'll start to just wear out and then the leak's going to just keep coming? So you just put... <clears throat> excuse me, just that little temporary band-aid on it. And oftentimes I think that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to, they want to be storyboard artists, character designers, this, that, you name it, but or, or illustrator, whatever they're trying to do, but they're putting just these little band-aid fixes. What's the shortest, quickest way that I can solve this problem and, and, and just get me moving on, right? Without really diving into it. So where people struggle a lot of time in their own ability is just the lack of knowledge. So now they want to do a character design, but what they're missing is an understanding of observation, of really looking at people, which can help be part of the core problem. What they're missing is an understanding of construction within within their work and putting the pieces of the puzzle together, right? They still just want the, the full thing. They want it just to be success straight away. They're missing putting in that feeling and that gesture within the bodies. So that's that's a missing core ingredient that's not showing up in their work. And so all these little things are make up the big picture, but because from the lack of having those is always going to make it harder and more frustrating. Every time you go to draw that person, man, I can't get their likeness. I can't get the nose right. I can't get the eye right. I can't figure out the finger. I can't get the hand position right. I'm just going to hide my hands. I'm going to do things like this because you've neglected the core problem is the foundation. The, you know, the, the, the honest fundamentals. Now, I'm not talking about learning every single bone and muscle in the body and to that extent. I personally, I've made it my whole career successfully without having to know every single muscle and bone and how everything works all the time. It's just like, but what, what was my strength, I feel, was my love and appreciation for illustration and the old time illustration, the old timers from Albert Dorn and Robert Fawcett and, and Norman Rockwell and the JC Leindecker and you know, you name it, all these guys, but what made them so great. And as we move into the cartoonists, when you look at say Jack D Davis and you look at Milk Call and you look at uh, Mark Davis and you look at all these different artists, Mort Drucker, their, their foundational knowledge was so great and so strong that it made their cartoons and exaggeration and caricature 50 billion times better. So part of a reason why you're going through this just this depression, this anxiety, this frustration is because you lack of knowledge. So this is what I see as a teacher over and over and over again. People go, man, I'm drawing all the time. I'm, I'm, 
I'm practicing and they're trying to do their cartoons. And like I mentioned, a lot of times people are just trying to get to the details. People spend most of their time just trying to figure that out and trying to make pretty drawings and try to understand lighting and try to understand color before they even understand what it is they're even building upon. So the, this is where that frustration is coming from, okay? And so, and the second level of frustration that I see and depression and just, again, mainly just like unhappiness within your art is if you're just allowing yourself to do one thing within your art form. And I say this because the majority of artists that I find are unfulfilled, unexcited, depressed, suffer, you know, or go low self-esteem, all these other things that are going on internally are due to the fact that a lot of times they're just doing one thing. They may just be that storyboard artist in the studio and that's all they're doing. All they're doing is this one form of art. They're just doing children's books. They're just doing comics, but that's all they're doing and maybe just one genre. So all they're ever doing is the same thing over and over again. So the, a healthy thing to do, like in nature and, and just the way you're going to treat your own body is you're not just going to eat one certain thing all the time. Can you imagine if all you ever ate was an, was an apple? That's all you ever ate. You never had any sort of variety. You never did anything. Can you imagine, again, it's almost like, you know, there, there's just no variety of anything. It's almost like communism in a way. If there was just one thing that you, this is it. This is all you get. This is the same thing you get every time. The same rations, the same thing over and over and go day in, day out. You are going to be miserable. You're going to be unhappy. So why do you choose to eat, have a different meal every night if you can, or you want to go here, or you want to see a different movie, or you want that? Because what we want in life is variety. And if we're not giving ourselves the option or ability to have variety in life, this is what is just going to make you unfulfilled and unsatisfied. So you may be finding yourself in a position, in a place, in an area within your career where, and especially for you veterans out there who watch these uh, videos, who have been in it for the long time, this is what's going on. You're bored. You're stuck. You're doing the same thing over and over again and just life has become boring and just unfulfilled and unexciting. So what do you need to do to do that? Again, the same point that I bring up over and over and over again in these art talks is the importance of just making sure that you're doing other things. And you know, and, and I say it for myself a lot because that's how I that's how I interact. That's how that's how I roll. It's just I have to, you call it ADD, you call it whatever you want, you know, God bless ADD, you know, God bless the, the idea that I, I am sort of like squirrel, woo, I'm all over the place and I'm chasing little shiny objects here and there because to me, that's what makes it all exciting. I can't just do just one thing. This is what forced me 12 years ago to leave working in-house on productions in the animation industry. I was just bored. I just, I, and, and this is what made me want to do all the things I was doing while I was internal and while I was working at these places. I was always working on separate things. I was trying to publish my own books. I was, I was doing caricature gigs. I was trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to do so many other little things because it just made life more exciting. And I think that's the most important thing that we have to remember what we need to aspire to or do is just make life more exciting how do i make this life more exciting this is where we're at this is where we're at this is what it's always been we've always been from the beginning of time humanity mankind has just tried to find ways to make life better how can we make washing our clothes better how can we make getting from point a to port b E, point B easier? How can we make uh, something easier to so that I can make cooking easier for myself? Everything that we've done in life is just try to make life better, more comfortable, more interesting. So within an artist's realm, you have to think the exact same way. How am I going to make my artistic journey a lot more interesting? How can I get out of this rut that I'm in? How can I evolve beyond what I'm currently doing with my art and make my art even better. And it's about 
change. It's about not doing the same things over and over and over again. It's about adapting to certain situations. You may have to be um, draw all of a sudden you draw very realistically, but you're forced to force yourself to draw very simplest um, with, with, with simplicity to match a certain style so that you can work for a different company or do something else or vice versa. Maybe I draw very simply, but I need to draw more realistically in order to get that job. Now, I've gone through those phases where I have to go the realistic drawing, the this drawing. So it was a bounce between two. Now, as a forty-six year old going through my career, doing the things that I've done, I I I, I like the simplicity. I, I I feel like I've I've taken all the elements of realism and, and taken those things that I discovered through figure drawing and started to chop away at it and say, I don't really need that to say what I need to say. It becomes this language and this shorthand, so to speak, that we all start to evolve and build. As an art, as artists, we develop what's called the shorthand, where I can put down an emotion, a feeling, an expression with very few lines, but get across the same uh, feeling, emotion, and, and, and gesture, and everything without having to put so much information on it, into it and spending so much time and laboring over it and spending that. How do I develop that shorthand? You know, you can only develop a shorthand through the extensive um, drawing on your end of experience, of, 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 of repetition, of doing things over and over and over again to where eventually you just kind of get better at it, right? It's like everything else in life works the exact same way. So this is how you got to try to think about how can I do this with my art? How can I get myself out of this place that I'm in of unfulfillment, you know, unexcited, unenthusiastic with my art or not achieving what I want, the level that I want to in art. And again, number one is you got to find the core problem. You got to know what that is. You have to identify it. We got to know that the pipe is leaking from way underneath there, underneath the house over here. It's like when the cable guy comes to my house, He's got to fix my cable, my internet's down. Well, the first thing that he's going to do is just look at common pro. What could it be that's maybe internal in the house? Okay, it could be that. But I think now, hey, i got to go outside now and i got to go into the street box. And they go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then they find out, oh, it's because you're, the wiring through here isn't working. And all of a sudden they fix that. Fixes all these multiple problems. That's how you got to be as an artist if you're the artist that wants to improve upon their skill and 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 get better because you feel that frustration you feel like you're not getting any better and then the other artist that's that's succeeded in their level and their ability and they're freaking awesome and they're amazing but why is this amazing super talented artist so depressed and i've seen and met hundreds of them you are so freaking talented and you have so much ability. Why are you so damn moody and why are you so damn depressed all the time? And why are you so unfulfilled when you've spent all those years gaining that knowledge and now you're going to let what? Identify it. What is it? And maybe you might realize that, you know what? I've just kind of been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And from again, this is why I have to do 50 billion different things, because if I don't, I'm not happy. And people say, how do you do so many things? Or why do you do so many? It's not even why do you do so many things? How? But even though the reality is I do so many things because I get bored very easily. And that's just me. That's my own organism. That's my own personal tree here. I get bored very easily. And in order for me to make life exciting for me, I have to keep developing new things. So maybe that might be the same for you. And you might find yourself that maybe you've been doing comics forever, but maybe you might want to branch out into character design where you never thought that was a possibility. Maybe you're doing just caricatures and that's all you do, but you love telling stories. So maybe you want to evolve into maybe a storyboard artist or a children's book author. And these are just little things that you, you get yourself involved in, but that would be my advice to you, if you find yourself unfulfilled and bored all the time, 
most of the time it's because you're just doing the same thing. So, so branch out, do something different, at least try to think about doing something different and uh, move on from there. All right, thanks for watching and I shall talk to you guys next week. Take care. To subscribe to my mailing list and stay updated on future workshops and events, please go to my contact at silvertunes.com and simply hit join mailing list. Until the next time, make it a great week and thank you for listening.